Yes, finally. Sorry, I was having a little bit of technical difficulty today. Difficulty today, but happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. As you were hopping on, sorry, I put these on and I breathed right in them, so they're all fogged up. As you were hopping on, let me know where you were tuning in from. Because if you are with me today, I really, really appreciate you because it is crunch time for me and my tax professional friends. If you are doing any type of compliance work, the individual extension deadline is Monday, which gives us about six days to get those all filed, clients happy. And I know I've been talking to some of my different tax brothers and sisters, and everybody doesn't even have all of their clients' information. So if you are stressed out right now, (laughs) again, thank you for being on here with me. And I see somebody here on Facebook. Let me go ahead and make sure you all can hear me on LinkedIn Absolutely. Hey, Larry, how are you doing? The final push. I hope you don't have too many left on your desk. Um, I have more than I am proud of at the moment, but I plan on being done by Friday and sleeping in on Tuesday for sure. Now, let me see. So last week, you guys may not know this, but over on LinkedIn, StreamYard had created two events. So Everybody that was trying to come couldn't actually get on. Uh, Thank you, Karina, and good morning to you. She said, yes, I can hear you over on LinkedIn. Cool. It's still not popping up for me, but I'm not going to flip out, not going to freak out. I'm going to get going. Um, Cool, cool, cool. So, Larry, you have two simple returns. Um, (laughs) I have a few simple returns. I still need to get mine out. When I first started, I never understood why actual tax professionals got theirs out late. Not late. I'm sorry. I'm getting it done on time. But why they did theirs last or like right by the extension deadline. I was like, oh, my goodness, like just do yours first. Well, obviously, back then I had a way more simple return. Right. Um, But my goal next year is to actually get my returns done before anybody else's. Let me see. LinkedIn is playing with me. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. I got it. And I can hear myself. Cool. So now I can see my comments there. Let's see who else is in there. Deja says, good morning. And I want to be done by Friday. But these clients, girl, tell me about it. Um, But that most definitely is an area where You know, you have to establish boundaries. If clients don't have things in by a certain time, you can't push yourself to the point of no return, being unalived um, to get the client stuff done. Now, for me, because I had some stuff going on actually this time last year, that's why I've extended a bit of grace because I was not as on top of it this year as I am usually um, to make sure that they get me all their information so we can get it out on time. Letitia, thank you for joining. I don't think we've ever met before, but I saw you on the end of last week's broadcast, but thank you for being here. I know that you all got tax returns to go do because you just told me I got tax returns to do. I got some articles to write and some podcast episodes to record. So I'm going to get right to it. You all know if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I will address them here on the broadcast. If I don't know the answer, you all know that I will quicken in a hurry, say, I don't know. Um, But I will help you find that if at all possible. If you were catching the replay, please hashtag replay. Still let me know whatever comments you have. And I am sorry because I said I was sharing this to my personal Facebook and I did not. I'm going to get this shared and we are going to get right into today's broadcast. Let me see who else hopped on. Hey, Essence, how are you doing? Essence is, no, we're not birthday twins. I think we just share the month. 
But yeah, I'm at Essence this uh, past July when I was in Jamaica in the accounting retreat. We had some fun times together, didn't we? All right, here we go. I need to just write my caption for that, paste it so I can just get it out there good, right? Oh no, Miss Dorothy, you couldn't find me on Facebook. Uh, we will get that situated after after today's broadcast because you know we gotta be connected on all the platforms, right? But if you have no idea who I am, you are new to me. My name is Timlin Bowens and I am America's favorite EA. So as an enrolled agent, I am licensed and authorized by the IRS to do tax preparation, advising, consulting, but most importantly, do representation. I'm also the owner of Bowen's Tax Solutions, which is a virtual firm that is based in Louisville, Kentucky. And we specialize in helping taxpayers with tax issues of $100,000 or more. Unless they are trying to have a lien removed or they are actively being levied. So that's the type of work that I do as an enrolled agent. So Essence says, can't complain. Larry switching over to LinkedIn because LinkedIn is where it's at, right? Um, but today I'm doing this broadcast. So the Tuesday broadcast really have been designed to help other people that are enrolled agents, to help people that are pursuing the EA credentials, because mm -hmm. I want to be what I didn't have as an enrolled agent, right? I had tax mentors. I had business mentors. I had life mentors that were just in the accounting industry, but none of them were actually enrolled agents. And the people that I did have, we could relate in the same terms of, you know, building a tax practice, but there were other things that we couldn't relate on. I'll let you guys use your imagination there. So I said, who would I have wanted when I was in the tax industry, when I joined the tax industry as an intern in 2011 to help me guide me along the way to make sure that I'm staying on top of my different goals and things. So that is how these Tuesday live streams were birthed, right? But then, excuse me, but then as I was going about, I realized how much information tax professionals don't have about enrolled agents. Not only that, if you don't know what you are capable of doing with a certain license, that means you're not able to relate that to the client as well. So for today, Yes, it's still targeted for enrolled agents, those pursuing the credentials. But if you have people in your life that are like, hey, you're an EA, what does that even mean? This broadcast is actually for them too, because we get so caught up sometimes in what I like to call taxonese, which is the language where we talk way up here so we can sound smart to each other, but we have to be able to explain what we actually do to the taxpayers, because that's who we're going to help. That's who's going to actually pay us and make sure that we get all the finer things in life, right? So I have people, hi, Carmen, how are you doing today? I have people that will, for lack of a better word, argue with me that they don't need to be an enrolled agent. And I won't even say argue. It's really get more defensive when I ask why they are not credentialed. Mm -hmm. um, they'll talk to me and they'll be like, well, I don't need to be credentialed to prepare tax returns. That is 100% absolutely right. All right, you don't. You just have to have a P10. The barrier of entry is very low. And that's why we see all the foolery we see now, right? Because people don't have good ethics. That's not really being monitored. You don't have to be credentialed to do that. Then we have tax planning, right? So tax planning really is the preventative care to make sure that you don't have tax issues. People say, I don't have to be credentialed for that. Again, 100% absolutely right. All right. But then I see people and they're like, well, I want to help people with back taxes and I don't have to be credentialed to do that. And that's where the line gets really blurred. All right. So I've said this before. You can do the paperwork for sure but you can't completely alleviate the client of their issue if you can't step in 
their shoes, what I like to say, be a substitute for that taxpayer and handle the problem for them. The EA credential is what distinguishes us from, I'm sorry, not distinguishes us. It differentiates us. Can you guys tell I've been working late doing taxes? It's what differentiates us from all other tax professionals, okay? So yes, a CPA can also do representation. We have tax attorneys, they can do representation, but they are licensed through their state bar, through their state board of accountancy. As an enrolled agent, you have the highest credential awarded by the IRS. This gives you unlimited practice rights. And again, let me not stay up here with tax and ease. With unlimited practice rights, that means you, as an enrolled agent, have the ability to represent taxpayers all over the world, it doesn't matter if you did their tax return, all right? So you don't need AFSP. It doesn't matter if they're in your state or not because the IRS has given you the privilege to practice anywhere to represent any type of case. Now, if you have some restrictions on your account, that is gonna be on you because they are gonna look at things like tax compliance. They can come back and limit it, but you are in such a powerful position to advocate for the taxpayer on both sides of the field. All right. So for example, I'm a member of NAEA. All right. So that's the National Association of Enrolled Agents. This past May, they have what's called fly-in day. Uh, it might be fly-in days because I feel like it's more than one day. Anyway, the opportunity was given to enrolled agents that were members of this organization to actually go to Capitol Hill and talk to different politicians, the decision makers when it comes to our tax law. I told you all I've had the opportunity to be in a focus group where we were able to give the IRS feedback about how the tax season went for us and for our clients. If you're just out here, P10 Penny and uh, I don't need to be credentialed. You're not in a position to fully help the taxpayers. Now, if you only want to do compliance work, no shade. You go ahead and do that. Get your P10. Please do some CE, continuing education, so you know what you're doing. But don't you dare say that you're doing everything that you can to help tax professionals if your P10 Polly. I can't remember what I said her name was at first. All right. So... Let me go into the three things because I already talked about what differentiates us. There is compliance work, and this is what we have to be able to explain to our clients as well. Enrolled agents can do compliance work. Enrolled agents can do tax planning. We also do representation. No, no two enrolled agents are the same, all right? <laughs> we're not built the same. So if we're going to focus on the compliance work, some of the reason why we get burnt out working with taxpayers is because taxpayers don't know the difference between compliance, planning, and representation. So we offer to do compliance work, which is the tax preparation, which is after the fact. We're just taking what happened and reporting it to the IRS. But then... When their tax bill is too high for them to pay in one sitting, they want you to give them advice on how to lower that tax bill. And what we as tax professionals, enrolled agents have a problem doing is saying, hey, that's a different engagement. It doesn't all come in one package, right? If the taxpayer gets a letter saying, hey, you actually didn't report all your income, the taxpayer wants to come back to us and say, hey, all my income didn't get reported. I need you to fix this. Now, how many of you have fallen into the trap of fixing something for a taxpayer without actually charging for it as a different engagement? Whether it be, let's say all the income didn't get reported, but it wasn't your fault. All right, because if something's your fault, you should fix it for free. But what I've seen happen is taxpayers will be in such a rush to get all of their stuff done because they're anticipating this refund that they forget that they worked a side gig, right? So you don't have a W-2, you may be missing a 1099. And then when the IRS letter comes, not only do you read it for free, you fix it for free. Oh, I must have all angels in here today because nobody's made that mistake before. 
Let me see what's going on LinkedIn. All right, LinkedIn. I see I actually have one more person over here on LinkedIn than I do on Facebook. And you guys are quiet as a mouse. And today I am not responding to messages that I get during the live stream. You guys are going to have to put them in the comments for me. All right, we got one person that says me. I'm not going to put them up. Deja, thank you, because that's what I was going to say. We're taking action. Deja says I'm invoicing that client today. But here's the thing. Because of the lack of the taxpayer's knowledge, we end up feeling bad. You know, a lot of us get into this to have an impact on our families. A lot of us get into this because we enjoy helping people. I enjoy helping people. If you follow me on any platform, you know, I always say I'm on a mission to fill the tax literacy gap one taxpayer at a time. That's not because of my personal experience. I've never owed the IRS $100,000 or more, right? And I'm not even going to say yet because if I have a bill like that, I am prepping and making sure I'm writing that check when it's due. I feel for these people. I have empathy for them. That's what keeps me going, what keeps me writing the blog post, keeps me doing the podcast, what even keeps me doing this. Because, I mean, if y'all are on Facebook, y'all can give in the offering plate and give me some stars, but I'm not getting paid about, for this. I'm passionate about educating taxpayers to fill the tax literacy gap. Me helping you all expands that reach to help other tax professionals. I'm just going to go on the limb and I'm going to say everybody here is a good tax professional. Everybody here is going to be an excellent enrolled agent, right? If you don't charge for all of your services, that will lead to you being burnt out very, very quickly and you will not perform your best. Ask me how I know. Because as soon as you start undercharging, that person that you're undercharging is going to come back and they're going to want more and more and more. And they, a lot of people will be offended when you're like, hey, this is a price increase because you're actually getting more services. And then that causes you to question, all right, are the services I'm offering actually valuable? Can I actually do this? And once you start asking all those questions, your commitment to that project just starts to go down. Or maybe I'm just speaking for myself today. All right. Now, <laughs> Karina sent me, Deja said, I'm invoicing that client today. But my brother Larry, the good deacon, said, I will tell people in a heartbeat that is separate. Now, Larry, I know you said you used to be a state auditor. So you see, you've probably seen some stuff on the other side as well. I will tell people now, and it's easier for me to tell people that haven't been grandfathered in. And when I say when I say grandfathered in, I have been, I've had people that have been with me since 2014 that in some ways have kind of turned into family. Now, if we got the same blood in a heartbeat, I'm going to tell you, hey, that that's not the same thing. You know, you might be my cousin, my brother. I might take care of it, but this is what it would actually cost you. For people coming in, it's easier for me to tell in a heartbeat, but I personally, I struggled with that. And that's another reason like I can connect that to me getting burnt out. And the reason why I don't want that to happen to other professionals, because I know how my performance was when I was being paid accordingly. And when I wasn't and I felt taken advantage of and all that, the performance dropped. So I'm glad that you can do it in a heartbeat. It took me some years. Um, but I'm in a better place now. So Deja asked, did you increase your prices for tax prep once you became an EA? By how much? I did increase them when I became an EA, but I don't. I think it was in the natural progression of my business because I, I already had my business before I became an EA. Um, so I don't think it was specifically because I became an EA. Now, because there was just a time of year where I increased it, like I said, it was in the natural progression I did. That doesn't mean that you can't increase yours because you became an EA, okay? Um, because you're becoming an EA. Because I know you're studying and getting ready to sit for the exam. You're going to knock them out of the park. You should charge for your expertise, most definitely. 
Um, I really can't. So I could tell you how much I increased by. And even now I was talking with uh, two of my tax sisters and I said, you know what? I've been saying that I'm getting rid of prep and this year, even between 2022, 2023, no. Well, yeah, for tax years. So right now we're doing 2022. So between this fall, and next spring, I am going to drop another third of my book. And I said, you know, I was talking to some associates, CPAs, um, and they were saying their tax minimum is 800. Another one said theirs is a thousand. Now, when I first started, I would have been like, oh my goodness, but this is something that I share with my community. You have to be clear on who you're marketing to and your pricing is also a reflection of that. So if there's a certain type of client that you don't like, you have to figure out what are you doing to attract them? One, it could be pricing. Two, it could be the type of advertising you're doing. Hang on. So with keeping all that in mind, I was like, what am I doing to attract these clients that are draining me? For me, because I said like I have empathy towards the people that have tax issues, I was wearing that on my shoulders. Nothing wrong with that, but I would let my emotion do the pricing versus the knowledge that I had. So for me, doing the price increase I had to do it for me and them so they would also respect me as a professional, if that makes sense. Um, but as, let me go back, when I was talking to my tax sisters, I was like, am I tired of doing tax prep because I really don't enjoy the work anymore or because I'm burnt out from being underpriced? Because <laughs> I have some people that um, left mutually, I have some people that left on their own. And just like communication, everything was all over the place. Now, I will say there are some things most definitely where I dropped the ball. There are some like I'm not dealing with this because you are so underpriced and want so much extra. Like, what do y'all say? Get somebody else to do it. It was causing me to not only resent the work I was doing, but to also resent those people as well. Now, <laughs> Deja, I know you probably didn't ask me all that, but when you increase your price, make sure that you have your value factored in there. I really can't tell you how much to increase it by because I don't know what your prices are right now. You might be like, bam, right there, right where it needs to be. But you also may be, I know people who try to compete with their area geographically on pricing. If you're the expert, that doesn't make sense right? Because people will pay for the expert and you don't have to compete on anything else when you know you're the expert. That's why right now I have folks that'll reach out and be like, hey, I want to get a consultation. I'm having this tax issue. And I used to feel bad because I was like, okay, well, if they don't owe this much, then it shouldn't be the same price. And I was like, no, my expertise is my expertise. If I can, if I can solve the problem in 45 minutes to six, 45 to 60 minutes, that was a value. It doesn't matter if this person owes a hundred thousand or if they owe 25,000 because one person might be able to get the problem solved on that one call and one person might need to retain me. So with that being said, and all of my EA friends don't even do this. All my CPA friends, theirs isn't even this high. To get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, and I don't even know how much longer it'll be one-on-one -on -one with me, that's $500 for the hour. But here's the thing. I haven't had one person who paid for that consultation since I've been charging for them complain and say they didn't get their value. I have not had one person person. Now, will that person come? Absolutely. But I've had people complain like, oh my goodness, that's too high. Well, guess what? I'm the expert. I like to eat, do nice things. I need to be doing money generating activities. Get somebody else to do it. So when you raise your prices, you have to be comfortable with the fact that not everybody is going to want to work with you anymore. But that's fine because you don't want people that want to work with you based on price. 
You want people that want to work with you based on the value that they understand that you give. All right. Now, I wasn't planning to go all that way, but I hope I answered your question. Um, all right. I got some long comments. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you were studying with Letitia. Very cool. That makes sense because I think I did see her pop on after you, which, by the way, if you all you ladies would like some support, of course, I'm not helping with studying for the exam, but um, I do still have room in my community the tax pros representation journey. Um, this week, I actually just went over how to get your first representation client. Next week, we're going over how to handle the first consultation and then how to price your first case. So most definitely, as you guys are getting momentum, I know you're studying, so you can't do the actual representation piece yet. But as I've said before, you can still do the paperwork. You still can get the practice under your belt until you become the enrolled agent and can handle the whole case on your own. Um, I have a network of EAs that I'm sure would be glad to partner with you if you needed somebody to get on the phone. Um but yeah, I would be very, very happy to have both you ladies in there. So let's see. All right, Deacon. <laughs> so Larry says, I had a former client decide to prepare their own taxes. Mm -mm -mm, know where this story is going. A few years passed by and after years of owing due to poor planning, I, I see what you did there. You didn't give them free planning because they didn't pay for it. The IRS sends them a letter and their employer to withhold at single and zero. They showed up, not at your house, not at your house. They showed up at my house with the letter in hand to ask a quick question. Uh -uh. And guys, I just want to let you know, there's no such thing as a quick question. That is always a rabbit hole. I don't know why people think their question is going to be just a quick question. All right. Think about it this way too. You can charge for your time because if you have to go to the doctor to get a diagnosis, do you have to pay for that? Now, granted, hopefully you have health insurance, so maybe you just have a copay. Maybe they'll cover that first one. Maybe you can get on the phone, but you better believe that is built into pricing somewhere. I do not understand why tax professionals and lawyers are supposed to use their expertise and answer questions for free. And when I say supposed to, I'm saying from the viewpoint of the general public, that is one of the things that I strongly dislike about the internet because yes, we are accessible, but at the same time, we're still real people. We're still experts. So you need to make sure that you set that firm boundary. So there's, like I said, there's no such thing as a quick question. If you want to have something set up for 15 minute consultations, please do that. But just remember when you start answering quick questions, that leads down a rabbit hole of disrespect and it may not be malicious but when i say disrespect it is disrespecting your expertise because they know you're the expert because they're coming to you for the answer and when we go to an expert we should expect to pay that expert for their expertise right let me keep going so they show up at larry's house with the letter in hand to ask a quick question since they were family i basically told them look this happened because you didn't tax plan underpay three years in a row suck it up get right and pay a tax professional even if it isn't me. And that is, you were very kind to them because I I don't know if I would have been as kind and short <laughs> with family members. I'm like, look, you know better. You could have paid me a long time ago. But I like how you still pointed them in the way of a tax professional, even if it wasn't you. I always end my podcast like that. Like, I don't want anybody to be suffocating under tax debt. But if you can't pay me for the initial consultation, and I don't mean money wise, I mean, because you feel like you shouldn't have to. We're not the right fit to work with each other. And even if it's not me, they need to go get the help they need. So kudos to you. Deja says, yes, that makes sense. Also said, I love all the info. I appreciate it. No problem at all. And see, look, I'm going to put another plat plug in. They ask me all kinds of questions within the tax reps, the tax pros representation journey. So if you don't know what that is, not just Deja, but anybody listening, because I got oh, I got five people over here on LinkedIn. So with that, it is a private podcast and article subscription. So every Monday, 
<laughs> I don't have a time dialed in yet. And I'm laughing because if you're in the community, you know, yesterday I had the podcast ready. I didn't hit publish. It didn't go out. Anyway, every Monday there is a podcast episode. So like I said, yesterday I covered how to get your first representation client. The week before I did five mistakes I've made as an EA. And in this podcast, it's supposed to be 10 to 15 minutes. There have been a few times I went 20. They forgave me like you, Deja. They said they love the information and appreciate it. But then on Wednesdays, there's also an article that breaks it down into more detail. So for example, last week with the five mistakes I made as an EA, I shared those five mistakes, but then I presented to them five different things that I wanted them to commit to so that they don't make the same mistakes. Five different things to commit to. So when they're kind of straggling the fence, they make sure they don't lean over too hard and make the same mistake, right? So we have good conversations just based on those articles, seeing their homework, them implementing it. But then in addition to that, in the app, and it's not Facebook or LinkedIn, they have the opportunity to ask me any questions they like, right? If they're stuck on something, if they need help with the case. So we do have all of that in the tax pros representation journey. Honestly, I'm an enrolled agent. Those are my people that I talk to. The name probably is going to shift to the enrolled agents representation journey. Um, but yes, so if you have more questions, things like that, my time is devoted to that um, and it is a monthly subscription. So it's not a plan that you pay for the whole year. Then you're stuck with me if you don't like me. We're not vibing right. You don't pay the next month, you're gone. And it's all good. Um, and whenever you join, you will have access to all of the past podcast episodes, all of the past articles. Um, if you're not in right now, you've seen that I've been able to share some of the articles, but you can't read the whole thing. You do hit a paywall that prompts you to subscribe. So let's see. Larry said, folks equate fees with tax refund. I don't like those customers. So Larry, I, I get what you're saying. And I kind of agree. For some people, it depends. Because I'll go back to my mission to fill the tax literacy gap at one taxpayer at a time. A lot of that is miseducation. Now, some people choose to be willfully ignorant. I don't like those customers, right? I don't like them at all. I had somebody get upset because they used to get big refunds. They were a parent. Prior to them using me, they were making under $20,000. So my tax professional people know that says big refund all over it, right? That's the sweet spot for the earned income credit. So they're looking at almost $10,000. No, I think they were closer to seven, actually. $7,000 refunds. Well, God was good to them. They got a better job and they start making close to $60,000. And they were upset with me because the refund went down. And I was like, well, the earned income credit is based on your income. So if you make more money, you get less assistance with that credit. But apparently I was doing something wrong and they wanted me to like create a business to bring the income down. Like it was nuts. Those type of people, like I said, willfully ignorant, that don't care. I don't like working with those people. But I also have people who at one time were earned income credit um, taxpayers who no longer are, but they invested in tax planning and what they should do with withholding. So even as their income and families have increased in size, they're still good not getting a $7,000 refund, but, you know, thankful to have more money throughout the year and be blessed in that way. So yes, the ones that will receive the education and no longer think <laughs> fees are equated with the refund I, I enjoy working with, but excuse me, I definitely can relate to where you're coming from. Keisha. Hey, Keisha, how are you? When did you decide to start offering tax resolution services? Sorry, I'm late. Hey, no problem at all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So sometime in August, um, I was saying I didn't choose tax representation. Tax representation chose me. So I wanted to take the EA exam 
when I was in school, I had no idea what an enrolled agent was because everything was pointed towards going the CPA path. Nothing wrong with that. Three seasons with a firm that gone international. They were huge. I only did tax stuff. For me, when looking at the CPA exam at that time, it did not make sense for me to take it, right? So I said the enrolled agent, special enrollment exam to become an enrolled agent, it makes more sense for me because I know I want to specialize in taxes. As I start putting that out there, which is why we have to be very careful what we say, right? People with tax issues, it's like I had a magnet just up like this and people with tax issues were just coming. I can't remember. I will send you the recording of the video. I want to say this was 2015. Um, I was introduced to a gentleman and his wife was getting ready to leave him. All right. Because like they, he just jacked his taxes up. So I helped him with the paperwork and I was like, I can't completely take this burden off of him. So like while I'm doing the paperwork, which we call tax resolution, I, I'm doing him a disservice by not being able to represent him. So I was like, I need to get serious about taking this exam, passing it so I can offer full representation services. So people use resolution and representation interchangeably. The paperwork is the same, but the work is not because fully representing somebody is not the same as just doing the paperwork. Um, it's a different relief for our clients. When you were doing representation, you were walking in a completely different authority because you don't need the client on the phone. You don't have to have them drag through the meetings and all that stuff. But um, I knew before I even left the firm that I was at that this is the type of work that I wanted to do. I just dragged my feet getting licensed so I could fully represent them. Now, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Let me know if it does or not. All right, LinkedIn, thank you guys for hanging with me. I see we're dropping over on Facebook. Like I said, I know we got six days to the tax deadline. I appreciate each and every one of you that's a tax professional that is on here with me today. If you all do not have any other questions or comments, y'all know what I say. I'm going to love you and leave you today. And I know there is a lag over here on LinkedIn because I'm watching myself <laughs> say what I just said. So I'll wait just a minute. Um, but the invitation I extended is not just for Deja Letitia. Um, it's to anybody because within the community, like I said, the tax pros representation journey, it is designed to be what I didn't have. But at the same time, I appreciate all of the feedback that they're giving me within that community because I am going to do podcasts and write articles based on what they need right now. So I have September mapped out. I have October mapped out, but we are about to quickly shift into what they're saying they need right now. So here shortly, we're going to be doing a class on form 433, um, which is the form that you need to fill out to figure out what your client actually qualifies for with their financials. And for my people that joined last month before my birthday, they're actually going to get a bonus class for, um, it's kind of a, a shortened version of my back tax negotiation workshop. So if you are interested in that at all, I'm going to leave a link in the comments on Facebook. I'm going to leave a link in the comments on LinkedIn, but I think you all are done. So I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Uh, plenty of caffeine <laughs> to all of you all still working on tax returns. And I will see you next Tuesday.